Okay, this is going to be the install of the three and a half inch rock crawler uh, mid arm flex system. It's not the uh, mid arm plus or the X Factor or anything, it's just a basic three and a half inch system. So, with the kit comes with the rear track bar, um, front and rear coil springs, front and rear lower adjustable control arms, uh, comes with front and rear extended stainless steel rated brake lines, uh, comes with the Sway bar disconnect for the front, sway bar links for the rear. I also added the front retaining clips for the spring coils. Uh, what else? Oh, we have the front track bar. And then I opted to get the 3 inch Synergy front bump stops along with a 3 inch rear. I'm doing a 3 inch because the Synergy uh, flip kit that I'm going to put in next week uh, goes with the front. Uh, track bar relocation bracket from Synergy and requires a three inch clearance. So uh, Under full compression doesn't contact the frame or anything So basically this is the entire kit here and once this whole kits done hopefully by tonight Tomorrow I go to discount tire get these mounted on my 17 by 9 fuel cranks um, Took me forever to find wheels. I kind of like those so those are the ones I'm going with and of course this is the Jeep 10th anniversary stock height uh, one thing you'll notice with the 10th anniversary editions is that the front rake is not really there uh, I've been told it has like a half inch lift from the factory as part of the 10th anniversary package uh, so if you actually look at it there's not much of a rake to the Jeep itself so I don't know if the coils are taller or just stiffer or not not sure um, but I know once I take them off I will be selling them Along with the stock factory 10th anniversary rims, I'll be selling those too. Um, so anyways, I will try to get videos uh, as the progress goes on. I'm working by myself, so uh, and no tripod, so I'm just going to have to kind of stop, take a video, and keep working. Other than that, uh, we're going to start. And actually what I'm going to do first is take off the 10th anniversary rock rails, because tomorrow when I go to discount tire, when I put the 35s on here, it's actually going to rub. On the end of the um, sliders so I'm basically going to cut off an inch and then spray paint it black and then put the caps back on all right so here we go I cut off an inch on each piece uh, the end cap is held on by a little retaining uh, what do you call it push retainers uh, so I drilled those out basically drilled new pilot holes so I can put the end caps back on them so I'm just gonna let these dry while these are drying I will start the front end of the Jeep for the lift kit to kind of start the front of the Jeep, um, what I did was I lifted the Jeep off the or from the axle up high enough to where my jack stands will hold the frame on the side, just right in front of the uh, front doors. Uh, the reason why that is is because in a minute or later on, we're gonna have to drop this axle down all the way to um, release the springs. And of course, before we do all that, take the tires off. Um, at this time, usually what I'll do is I'll take these little retaining clips off. Um, sometimes some aftermarket rims will um, uh, have to fit flush or whatnot, so that might get in the way, so I'll take those off. Um, plus, it's already off anyways, might as well take it off. Uh, for preparation, the front lower control arms, uh, Rock Crawler has a starting length of 32 and 5 eighths inches. I'm sorry, front lower control arms, 23 and an eighth inch, and the front track bar starting length or assembled length uh, should be 32 and 5 eighths inches. So I got those in. What you need to do with the front track bar is make sure it's kind of even on both sides as far as the amount of thread showing. Uh, I'm not going to lock them in place yet until right before assembly. Uh, at that point you want to put red Loctite on all the jam nuts to make sure it doesn't come loose. And I don't actually don't have a torque wrench that goes up to 250 pounds. Uh, so I'm going to basically use a cheater bar and get it as tight as I can, uh, kind of like on the 2010. Uh, but at this stage, because this is a factory setup, what we're going to have to do to allow the axle to drop down lower is I'm going to take the calipers off and kind of rest them on a milk crate for right now. Uh, we're going to take the shocks off, we're going to take the sway bar links off, and we're going to take the front track bar off. Once all that is off, uh, I am then going to take the factory drive shaft off as well. And the reason why is you don't want the, um, the drive shaft where it connects to the transfer case to make contact with the transfer skid plate um, because it can damage it. But also with this lift, um, I can't use this drive shaft anyways. So I'm taking off the front drive shaft. I'm going to leave it off. 
Uh, once everything's assembled, I'm going to take a measurement for the drive shaft, send it over to Tom Woods, and get a new drive shaft ordered. Usually arrives in about a week and a half. And once the drive shaft arrives, I can install the front drive shaft. So for about two weeks, I'll just have a rear wheel drive Jeep for the time being. All right, so I have the drive shaft off. Um, the shocks are off. The front track bar is off. The sway bar links are off. And what I noticed on the newer models, the 2010 didn't have this, but it seems like maybe the 2012 and 13s, uh, maybe even newer, uh, Jeep actually gave longer brake lines and they actually attach in here. So if I take this bracket off, I can actually drop the axle all the way without having to take the caliper off anymore. Um, so I guess that's something new because I know the 2010 uh, didn't have it like this and I took the calipers off because it was really tight. But now looking at this, there's a lot of leeway in here. Also, before dropping the axle, make sure you unclip some of these harnesses to give some leeway. This is for the um, um, electric locker for the front. Because um, if I drop the axle all the way, um, it'll probably pull these out. So I basically just unclipped it, pushed them out of the clips, and that way it gives it a little bit more slack. And as I lower the axle, I'm going to be watching out for it just to make sure it doesn't get too tight. Other than that, I'm ready to drop the axle.